Latino Cochino Radios. We 96.3. Ladies and gentlemen, Macklemore is hanging out, living life. How How is life? Life is fantastic, man. I, uh, I'm i almost done with an album. We'll, we'll go to that in a second. I, I want to talk about something I saw on your Instagram. This is life-changing, unless you had it. I don't know if you did or not. There is a... It's a. I don't want to mess this up. It was a smoking hot Butterfinger. Oh God, I didn't buy that thing. Who? I don't understand. It was, it. I mean, there's like it flaming was a hot butter, Cheetos and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was like that. It was like a. There was a pepper going through a Butterfinger. There was four. It was like a Reese's peanut butter cup Butterfinger hybrid, hot that's jalapeno flavor, bro. Where was it? We're like, I mean, that's like. Some I feel like it was in Oregon. Stuff. It was like a gas station in Oregon. <laughs> um, I don't know who would mix that. Like <clears throat> spicy peanut butter. I don't know. I didn't want to try it. I'm I'm a big Butterfinger fan, and sometimes you just don't want to uh, infiltrate with different flavors that mess up a classic. You obviously like travel nonstop all over the world. What are like the road trip necessities? I mean, you drove out here today, right? I did. Okay, I did. so yeah, road trip necessities. What are you doing? Uh, today I bought uh, Starburst. Which I'm not usually like. A, I need to go to Is Starburst. There a specific, like, are you original? Are you tropical? All red? What are we doing? I'm going all pink and red. Okay. Um, those are the best ones. Yeah, for sure. But I didn't buy those today. I bought. They had like unwrapped minis. In What's a package. A mini Starburst. They're already small. Yeah, they're, they're smaller. I haven't opened them yet. I actually didn't. I just bought them just because I was like, just oh, because one at one Impulse moment tonight. Buy, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I bought them though, um, and. Yeah, they're unwrapped. That was interesting. I also bought a fidget spinner, an American flag fidget spinner. I have not touched a fidget spinner yet. Hold up, I know bro. they're like the crate. You have Hold one. Up, it's on bro. you right now. Mm-hmm. I think so. I feel the weight in glorious. my pocket. Pun intended. This isn't the one though. This is the one I bought at the last gas station. So what do you even do? You just hold it and spin it? Yeah, man. They last for about fifteen seconds of of fun and glory, and then you're like, all right, I'm done. It's like a dog. Like you throw a ball, and they're like, oof, and then yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, that, particularly really the it? person. Like, like you don't do nothing. It's just. Well, you're not great at it. I'm gonna be honest. Well, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, this is my first time. T- yeah, I understand. What, so just, what do you do? How do you? How do you? You're starting great? like, like really. Hold on, I'm not left-handed. See. I don't yeah. Know, see, I'm, there I we go. I'm gonna be judged. Hold mm-hmm. on. <laughs> All right. Oh shit, that was horrible. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you got one hand. You got it. You got it. Like hold it like this. Yeah, that's what you. There you go. There you go. Now you got it. See, you got good quick. Do girls? Do girls like do me girls that, that? No, that masturbate no, very well. Definitely not. Are they better at this than than men? You think? Um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of women fidget spinners. I haven't seen a lot of male fidget spinners either. I hope not. It's just a gas station novelty trick that's gonna go. be around forever, just like Pogs and Magic cards. Oh my God, I was a beast at Pogs. I had the meanest slammers, bro. Yeah, slammer game. Oh my God, yeah. the meanest. I had like the platinum one and like the gold mm-hmm. one. I felt like a beast. Like, yeah, that's like what sixth grade. Yeah. For me, like that. for me too. Damn. The thing about Pogs was that I mean that's like gambling, you yeah. know. Like, and I remember Pokemon. All that like stuff is like gambling. Bro. Yeah, straight We're up. We're teaching the kids what how, how life's gonna be in Vegas in a few years. Yes, you're gonna go home crying and broke. <laughs> um, but like when I when I used to play like Pogs, you know, Pogs are one thing. Like if you lose a bunch of Pogs, it's like okay, cool. But when you lost your Slammers, oh my god, yeah, because that's that was a that's difficult your day, bro. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Nice and thick. Yeah. That was your manhood, yeah, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, those are some sad times. Um, talking just back in the day, I was uh you don't know that I was there. That sounds very creepy. But I was in Phoenix for a very important day of your life. You were uh you're you're doing a performance. Mm-hmm. This was in a parking lot of a mall, mm-hmm. and you said cactuses, and a fan screamed out, It's cacti. cacti. I'll never forget. Do you forget remember it. that day? I'll never forget. I'm it. like, they they they're they're jumping in the middle of your show to correct you right mm-hmm. now. And you actually went with it for a minute. I mean, I mean, I changed, I changed it, it my changed phrasing. perspective on yeah. cactuses. And to be quite honest, I if I ever say cactuses, I always correct myself immediately and say cacti. And you think I that person, that don't you? I I, I never saw do. their face, but Dang. there is an angel in the sky, <laughs> a grammar angel that comes down and is like psh, psh, cacti. What are your uh, What are your thoughts on the the passing of Prodigy? I mean, I saw you post a picture and mm-hmm. you said uh, he had one of the most unique voices when it comes to hip hop. Yeah, I mean, what, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, very, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I woke up late and uh, got on social media, and that was the first thing I saw on Instagram. And I was just like, Psh, in the heart, uh, Mob Deep was very influential to me. Um, Prodigy, incredible MC, just storytelling wise charisma wise like the whole swag that they brought from from new york like queens it was just 
it was they're they're legendary man and 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 he's legendary and just super sad man we lost a legend it's 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 one of those people that influenced so many and um yeah you know his, his music will live forever how do you uh, get to legendary status? Like, in your opinion, obviously, I mean, putting out records, like, I think that's what every artist wants to achieve at the end of the day. You want to be iconic. You want to leave yeah. something, a, a legacy. How, how do you get to that level? What are you doing now to to kind of push yourself forward? To, I think it's that? how I think it's how you shape um, other people's lives. You know, I think that is truly legendary. I think you can do that in a creative space. You can do that in, you know, in terms of being... Uh, a humanitarian or using your platform to further others that are, you know, it's more than just like, how do you put yourself on or how do, how do you sound or are you emulating or are you pushing the culture forward? Are you like trying to think of different ways to evolve as an artist? To me, that's legendary. And when other people follow that and you open up the doors for other people in that same way, in that creative space or from, you know, a, a social space, that is when, you know, someone becomes iconic and legendary. Very true. Did you uh did you see the video today that everyone's talking about with Joe Budden and academics I did. and Migos? What I are your did. thoughts when you see that? Joe reached out to you. I look back into this. He reached out like in 2013 or 14 and was like saying he's a fan of yours and what you're doing and everything like mm -hmm. that. I don't know if you still have a relationship with him or not, but when you see this video, what do you think? I want to know what happened. I know. I want to see the full thing. Like I there really, has to be more to it. I really want to know what happened. Um. Everyone says that obviously like Joe is like one of the old head hip hop dudes that just does not care about the the younger cats getting it right now do you think that's what it is do you think he was more upset with academics because academics was kind of messing around with migos and then and then like at the end kind of switched it up like well i'm a fan of what y'all do i mean was he more upset with academics or migos <sighs> your opinion these are this is a great question I by mean, the way thank you <sighs> it's tough to say i've thought i thought both I, we haven't seen it i don't know i don't know damn it i wanted to do uh lucky go get the video real quick the full thing we'll wait you have time yeah I know exactly how many seconds it is. It's 59 seconds. I watched it like four times. And I just, again, like trying to analyze the video, like who was he really mad at? And then obviously, I mean, they feel so I just don't know why he stood up. Like he's like, this needs to end. This needs to end. I don't think he would have been pissed at academics for like, you know, trying to be super nice at the end or like fanboying or whatever. I think that it was something else that we didn't see. And we will find out when Daily Struggle continues tomorrow morning on complex we should in the interview right here but i'm just gonna keep going like that's the perfect like that's the perfect like seg just drew into commercials but uh <laughs> um on, a, on like a super serious uh note I, you have this gofundme link in your uh ig profile mm -hmm. which i think is super dope let's say the people don't know the story of what happened uh touch on that a little bit i'm trying to think of the link shall i pull it up this is the GoFundMe account. It was uh i want to say i, I want to say she was Char a mother charlena lyles but, yes yeah um I didn't know if we put it up in the in the bio yeah, or not. Yeah, um, Charlena Lyles was a a mom of of three or four. I've read different things. I think it was three or four. I don't know, but um, she was from Seattle, and she called the police because she thought someone was breaking into her house, and the police came. There is varying degrees of information whether or not she had a knife or not um when the police showed up but the police ended up murdering her and you know she weighed 90 something pounds again mother of three or four and the police showed up the people that are supposed to protect her that she was calling to protect her it's calling for help yes calling for help showed up and and killed her murdered her um in front of her of her children and um you know, in in the the audio that they released, you know, one of the cops is like taser, and the other cops like I don't have, I didn't bring my taser, and then you hear like shots. What is it now? Why she was you, also pregnant too. Yeah, yeah, that that's insane. Why 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 do you think? I mean, obviously, like back in the day when it was time for cops to do some type of force, it was a flashlight and a nightstick. Mm -hmm. And at at what point do you think it go? It triggers to like gunshots. Like, uh, is it just a generation thing, or what? What is it with cops now? You know, what I'm saying that just they go to that as like the f the first resort. Boom. I mean, for, I'll I'll say this. I think that if Charlena Lyles was a white woman, that she wouldn't have been killed and murdered. Um, I think it starts there. I think it starts with um, police 
being under the the umbrella of systemic racism and that that systemic racism is ingrained in us and they're byproducts of it you know it 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 is the police fault and they should be held accountable and tried as such but it is a deeper issue than just the police react being reactionary right um so you know i think I mean, we have a long history of it. You know, we have a, a long history, a 500 year history of of racism in America, um, you know, starting with slavery. But if you are looking at it now, I think the police um, are scared and fearful. And I think a lot of times that that fear and, and them being scared is coming, um, you know, from their reaction to the color of someone's skin. I was uh, having a conversation with Ice Cube like two weeks ago because he's celebrating the 25th anniversary death, uh, death certificate. Mm-hmm. And he has a, a record on the new uh, album called Good Cop, Bad Cop. Mm-hmm. And one thing he was talking about was like that there's, he doesn't want people to think that there's nothing but bad cops out there because that's not the case. There's a ton no. of good cops. Yeah. But how do you weed out the bad ones? Mm-hmm. And he was saying he thinks that the good cops need to shine light on it. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, the thing that's so, it's so, <sighs> they're protected right like they're exactly. police officers like they their job is designed to be protected you know so like you're that's why you're not seeing anyone like you know they get paid leave and they're not being tried and you know um the acquittals i think what is necessary at this point because like to like abolish the police state in 2017 like that might be like a lofty goal for a certain time or like we we just have a ridiculous amount of guns in america Mm -hmm. i understand that like police feel like they need to be armed i completely get that i think um because they are risking their lives absolutely like i i understand it i think that that should be the very 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 last resort in terms of using that level of force and I think that what we really need is to go back to the drawing board in terms of how we're training police, in terms of um, actually doing trainings about systemic racism, and you know just starting there and building that foundation back up. Because if a cop is that quick to pull a gun out and shoot multiple times at a ninety-year-old woman, let's say, or ninety-pound woman, let's say she does have a knife in that situation, two police officers couldn't have done something besides fatally shoot and murder her. On top of that, too, the fact that the clips are always emptied. It's not just like one shot or two shots. Like, right. wop, 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 right. wop, until they Absolutely. Yeah, she got shot multiple times. Crazy, it wasn't man. It wasn't a, a shoot to, to you know, injure her. It was exactly. a shoot, shot to kill her. Crazy, man. I mean, you, you always do a good job, I think, of touching on things that are obviously topical and uh, just kind of, I think that's why your career has been so good. I mean, I've, you've done a good job of balancing. You got the fun records, but at the same time, you can put out music that really touches people and makes people think, which a lot of people obviously just aren't doing right. At, at this time, it's more so just fun, 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 turn up, turn up, fuck it. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. able to still have fun, but be like, yo, there's some stuff going on. We need to talk about it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. So uh, with Glorious, uh, let's touch on that real quick. I mean, the first song that, that you put out solo without Ryan Lewis, mm-hmm. What is that? what is the recording process like on that? Because obviously, I mean... I would assume it's it's somewhat different because for the past two joints, you know what I'm saying, you've been with Ryan nonstop, you guys create the whole thing. Right. And now you're just, like we were talking a second ago, You your friend made the beat mm-hmm. in like 15 minutes and you just jump on and you start doing it. Mm-hmm. What is that like now? It is different. It is different. I think, um, you know, Ryan and I were very meticulous with um, just almost before we were fully creative, like, you know, like Ryan would go through my lyrics and in, in bars before I would hop in the studio. You know, he'd be like, I like this part, you should do more of this. Oh wow. Hitting from this angle. Similar on my end, like I would, you know, be finessing the beat with Ryan for for days or weeks or months sometimes, you know, trying to get it right. Um this project has been much more of a like first thought, best thought, let's just make as much music as we can. And um the stuff that starts sounding good along the way let's let's go through and and fine tune that but um let's not think too much about it before i get in the studio before i get in the booth you know like i'll like write and be like boom let's go i'll record for half an hour you know we'll we'll, we'll pick a, a comp track and then the next day I'll, I'll wake up and be like was this good or was this whack you know what is can that I- normally what you do you you record something and not just jump on it immediately kind of give it an overnight thing 
like no, five I'll, re- I'll record and, and try to get a, a bounce of it, and then when I, you know, wake up with fresh ears, right? That's when I kind of can be like, okay, this is good or bad. And then you know, there's like the two weeks later, fresh ears, and there's like, does you know, two months later, do I still love this song? Or is this one that we're going to scrap? Do you have a song out now, maybe like one of the big records that was like a hit that you hear and there was something that you want to change and it just stands out every time you hear it? Like, damn it, why is that there? With, with Ryan going through my bars, probably not. No, he was like <laughs> super, this is not, this is not, this no, is not, I mean, this. Yeah, it's like songs go through so many stages. Like even with Glorious, it's like you have, you record the song and then you go, and I did like one rewrite on Glorious. Like my manager was like, "Yo, I feel like you could you could be better. This could be better." Is and it I feel weird like hearing it good. from him and not Ryan? <sighs> He's taking the place of Ryan <laughs> from a, from afar, but in a really good way. Like I need those people in my life. You know, like my wife will do the same thing. I feel like it's like you know, my manager's name's Josh. I feel like it's Josh and Trisha that will be like, "Yo, you got to change that bar. You shouldn't say that." Or like, you know, this could be tighter and. I would rather have those people in my life than everyone. Like, oh yeah, that's perfect. Right. Put it, put it out. Upload it now. You know, like I, I, I need that. That's where so you know, many of these artists are... go wrong too. Like these artists Absolutely. will be so big, and you'll be like, damn. Like, like when Wayne at one point, everyone's like, I miss the mixtape Wayne. I miss the mixtape Wayne because you, you get to such a big level where everyone's like, oh Wayne, that's great, that's great, that's great. Right. And he's gonna say, I'm gonna sing auto tune. Ah! Right. Like be completely off key, and everyone's like, bro, it's so amazing. Like that was great. You need people that are gonna be honest with you. Um, but like the process of it, like being. You know, let's take Glorious, for example, like working on that for months and then going to the mixing phase where you're going back and forth with a with a mixing engineer trying to get that right. And then you get to the mastering phase where you're going back and forth with a mastering engineer and then you go in to shoot a music video like I have heard Glorious like thousands of times now. And you were saying a second ago, it says it seven times in the hook. Glorious is, is repeated a couple times. Yep. Maybe seven. <laughs> a couple. Okay. Maybe seven. So technically, I mean, we're at 21 times throughout the song. If we're counting, yes. And you've listened, I mean, how many months did it take? I mean, it, you've heard it 17 billion times. Yes, correct? that that's I was going to say 18, but we'll we'll land on 17 okay, billion cool. times. Yes. <laughs> so by that point, like I'm not hearing things that I'm like, "Oh god, like I missed that one or I should have said that different." I'm like, "This is what it is." You uh you said you're working on an album. I mean, how many songs are we in right now, I mean, what do you have completed? I mean, I'm I'm at definitely at 30 plus recorded, but you know, we'll boil it down to, um, you know, probably 13 or 14 is my goal. There it is. Yeah. Well, any final thoughts, comments, concerns, something we didn't touch on that we should? I never know what to say at this point. This, this is the most important part, right? The part that I'm like, yo, you know what you should do? Huh? It's between us. Yeah. You should stand up and walk off like Joe Budden did. And then you're gonna stand up. And then I, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Hey, this is over, bro. Let it be no. over. This is over. Let it be over. I don't know why this guy just backed his ass up on me, y'all. It's uh, Tino Gachino Radio, Macklemore, We 96.3. Yeah.